When we start with a data set, one of the first questions we always ask is, what's the average of the data set? And then after we look at the bigger picture, it's time for us to move in and say, well, how far is a specific value from being average? And we're going to continue that discussion in this video by specifically looking at where a specific value fits within the rest of the data set. And we're going to consider this in a few different ways. The first way we're going to look at this is through what is known as the percentile. What are some examples of percentiles that you may have previously encountered? You may have heard this in terms of SAT scores. For example, maybe you scored in the 89th percentile. Another everyday example of percentiles is the height and weight of young children. For example, a pediatrician might report to a parent that their child is in the 30th percentile for height. What does it mean to score in the 89th percentile or to be in the 30th percentile for height? In general, we would say that a data value is in the nth percentile if approximately n percent of the values are less than that data value. Sometimes this might be denoted, the nth percentile might be denoted by capital P sub n. So in terms of our previous examples then, if you scored in the 80th, 89th percentile, that means that 89% of others taking the exam have scores less than your score. Or in a better translation, you scored better than 89% of the people taking the test. In terms of our second example then, dealing with a child who's in the 30th percentile for height, that means that the child is only taller than 30% of the other children out there. Let's actually work with some data sets to find some percentiles. We're going to work with a data set that has nine values for our first example. Um, and these nine values are 4, 7, 8, 9, 11, 13, 14, 14, and 19. So we can ask the question, you know, what percentile are some of these values? So as we look at this data set with nine values, let's focus on this seven right here. What percentile is that in the data set? Well, it's the second position out of nine, so if we calculate, two-ninths is approximately 22 percent. So we could say that this value right here is in the 22nd percentile. In a similar manner, the 13 is in the sixth position and six-ninths is approximately 67 percent. So we could say that this is the 67th percentile because 67 percent of the data values are less than 13. Um, and the 19, this is our maximum value right here, it's the nine out of nine or the hundredth percentile. All 100% of the data values are less than or equal to this value right here. Now, percentiles work well when you're dealing with large data sets and they're kind of clunky when you deal with smaller data sets like what we have right here. And some data sets actually have a very nice breakdown in terms of their percentile. So let's consider for a second example our large data set. This one has the values, the 10 values ranging from 49 up to 76. If I wanted to consider some of the percentiles here, we first note that there are a total of 10 values. So when I go to, you know, divide and figure out how many are less than a certain value, um, our denominator will be a 10. So um, what about, say, the, the 64 right here? Well, the 64 is in the fourth position, and 4 tenths is exactly 40%. So we would say that the 64 is the 40th percentile. In fact, if we were to attempt to calculate the percentile for any of these 10 values, we would get that this is the 10th percentile and up here is the 100th percentile, but it would break down evenly into 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on percentiles. And so that actually leads us to a new way to classify where a specific value fits within the rest of the data. So percentiles, our first way of measuring where a specific value fits within the rest of the data set, is great if you want to break something up into 100 pieces of equal size. But a second way that we can look at where a specific value fits within the rest of the data set is through what are known as deciles. And here, this is exactly like percentiles, but it breaks the data set up into 10 equally sized pieces. 
And really all we need to know is that the first decile is equivalent to the 10th percentile, the second decile is equivalent to the 20th percentile, and so on and so forth. We won't really focus on deciles too much in this course. The third way that we can break up a data set is into what are known as quartiles. As suggested by the name, a quartile um, is really going to have a quarter of the data set, or this works well when you're trying to break up the data set into four equal pieces. So suppose I have my data values, you know, some, some massive amount of data set. Um, what the quartile will do, or breaking things up into quartiles rather, will break it up such that I have four equal pieces. Each piece has 25% percent of the data values. So how do we find these positions within the data set? How do we find the quartiles? Well, first let's note that the first quartile corresponds to the 25th percentile, the second quartile corresponds to the 50th percentile, and the third quartile corresponds to the 75th percentile. Um, the easiest way to identify the quartiles is to actually start with the second quartile or middle position value. Note that by corresponding to the 50th percentile, that means half the data values will be less than it, and half the data values will be greater than my second quartile. What value within a data set has that property? That would be the median of the entire data set. So what about our first quartile or our third quartile? Well, notice that the first quartile it breaks in half the first half of the data set, and the third quartile breaks in half the second half of the data set. And this means that in order to find the first quartile, we can say that it is the median of the first half. In a similar manner, then, the third quartile will be the median of the second half of the data set. So let's do an example of finding the quartiles for our data set that has the nine values. Remember, that's, those are the values 4 through 19. Um, I've copied them over to this page. Um, we first want to identify our second quartile. That's going to be the median of the entire data set. Since we have nine values, the median of this data set will be 11. So this will be my second quartile and divides the data set equally in half. Now, looking at the first half of the data set, we say, well, what value is the middle, the physical middle of these ordered values? Um, we have four values. So what we have to do is we have to look at the average, the mean, between our second and third position value. And that gives us 7 plus 8 over 2. Uh, 15 over 2 is 7 so 7.5 then is going to be our first quartile. Looking at the second half of the data set, again we encounter an issue where we only have four values, so the median will be the mean of the two in the middle, um, so the third quartile then is simply going to be equal to 14. So we have 7.5, 11, and 14 as our three quartiles um, for the data set with nine values. Let's now do an example with our large data set. That's the one that has the 10 values ranging from 49 up through 76. Again, we've copied them over here. Um, since there are 10 values, the median is going to be between 65 and 68. And so that means that my second quartile is actually equal to 66.5. So once we have our median of the entire data set for a second quartile, 66.5, we can look at the first five values as the first half and the second set of five values for a second half and identify the median within each half respectively. So the first quartile then is the median to the first half and that's going to be 55. And the third quartile is the median to the second half of the data set, and that is 69. So the quartiles for this data set are 55, 66 and a half, and 69. So why do we care about quartiles? What use do they have for us? Recall that quartiles break the data set up into four equal pieces. So one of the things that we can do with quartiles is create a graphic or a visualization that allows us to see just how this data is distributed. So we can understand how a single value 
fits within the larger perspective of all values. So the graphic that we're going to create is what is known as a box and whisker plot. Now a box and whisker plot relies on knowing the quartiles and since we've done that for our two data sets we'll create the box and whisker plots um, for the large data set and then the nine valued data set. For our first box and whisker plot, we'll consider the data set that had the nine values. Again, these ranged from four up through 19. So um, they range from four to 19. The quartiles were the 7.5, 11, and 14. With a box and whisker plot, we're gonna start with a number line. And on the left edge of the number line, we're gonna use our lowest value of, in this case, four. And on the top edge, we're gonna label it with our maximum value of 19. And now we're going to identify on this number line the values of our quartiles. So 7.5567 would be approximately right here. So that's 7.5. Um, 11 would be about here. And that's our second quartile. And then our third quartile of 14 is right about here. Between our first quartile and our third quartile, we're actually going to construct a box, hence the name box and whisker plot. And now I'm just going to work on kind of adding to the box lines right here. Um, and we're going to make our whiskers a little bit fatter just so we can identify the relevant information. All right, right here we have what is known as a box and whisker plot. We have our box and whiskers on either side. But remember what these various indications are. Four is our minimum value, 19 is our maximum value, 7.5 is our first quartile. In other words, we know that 25% of the data falls between four and 7.5. And then we know that another 25% of the data value falls between 7.5 and our median value or our second quartile of 11. 25% of the data value falls between 11 and 14. And finally, we have 25% of the data values fall in that whisker right there. Um, it's not quite symmetric, but that's because our data isn't equally balanced. And that's what the box and whisker plot can really get to um, across, is it can tell us some of the skewedness of the data because it breaks it up in terms of what the data values actually are. Let's practice by looking at creating a box and whisker plot for what we refer to as our large data set. Um, that's the one that has the 10 values ranging from 49 up through 76. And the quartiles that we calculated for this were 55, 66 and a half, and then 69. So let's go ahead, get a number line. Um, the lower edge or the lower bound on this number line should be the minimum value to our data set. So here, this whisker should be 49 and the upper bound should be labeled with a 76 because that's the maximum value from our data set. So now between the bounds of 49 and 76 we want to identify our quartiles 55, 66 and a half and 69. Um, 55 will be approximately here. Uh, 66 and a half is about here. And 69 is right about here. So we go ahead and create a box around our first through our third quartile. Remember, this will contain the middle 50% of the data. Um, and then we'll also create a little bit of a dashed line here to kind of indicate where the median of the data set is. So again, the box contains 50% of the data, but remember that 25% of the data is from the first quartile to the second quartile, and 25% of the data values are actually from the second to the third quartile. So we see that this box and whisker plot is even a little bit more skewed than the previous one we considered. But at least this gives us a graphic of understanding the distribution of our data.